Hey guys, welcome to Violence Course. Uh, this is going to be the first lecture for the semester on sociology and the sociological perspective. I realize that some of you may have not had an introductory SOCH class, so I'm going to try to give you guys the basics and not get too overly complicated. I think uh, for the most part you guys are going to be able to follow along even if you haven't had the intro. So first off, we're going to go through, we're going to define sociology, social forces, describe the characteristics of the perspective, different assumptions that sociology makes as a field the benefits and limitations of the perspective. So first off, what is sociology? It is the systematic study of society and the activity of human beings. Why systematic? It follows a system of thought. We use the scientific method, just like all the other sciences, and we study the social behavior of humans. And this could include everything from the time you're born to the time you die. If you are doing something, it is a behavior. It's impossible to not be doing anything unless you're dead. And even then, you're decomposing. So how we understand things and how we respond are social behaviors. Yes, hurricanes, floor, tornadoes, floods, those are all natural disasters and they're events of nature, but we can still study them because how we respond to them and define them and understand are all a product of social behavior. So there's really nothing that we can't look at. Sociology is the field of science that investigates social forces. Uh, so what are social forces? They are man-made. They're generally invisible, but at the same time, they impact our very existence at every single moment of our lives. The rules, expectations, values, and beliefs of institutions and organizations are all man-made. Things like motivation, self-esteem, social class, we don't really see them, but they do impact our lives. So some of these things that would be considered social forces are religion, your uh, socioeconomic status, the political zeitgeist in which we live, gender norms. Everything that we're going to talk about this semester is a social force. So there are three characteristics of the sociological perspective. Uh, the first is seeing the general in the particular or seeing how particular facts may be the basis of a general pattern. So yes, we may think of something as an isolated incident, like a murder or someone getting divorced or somebody, I don't know, anything happening. But what we're looking at is when you take a step back from that and you look at all the incidents of these things happening to all of these different people, What's the pattern? What do these people have in common? So we're taking something that somebody might see as very personal and specific to them and saying, okay, well, what is it about this behavior or this thing that affects everyone else also in the same way? So what do they have in common? What connects them? What is this underlying thing that we're not seeing. Uh, 
the second is seeing the strange in the familiar. Um, all human behavior is the object of study. So something as simple as a pair of shoes. Yes, shoes are super basic and they're not very interesting, but maybe thinking, okay, well, what what makes somebody choose the type of shoes that they wear? It's, it's not always just comfort. Usually, you know, you look at these two pairs of shoes, for example, and why wouldn't you be able to wear either of those to the office? I mean, if you work on Wall Street, why can't you wear the top pair? What is it about that that would be inappropriate? You know, what, what makes those things different? Why does that matter? And all, all human behavior, even something as simple as shoes, is strange in the realm of sociology. But it's familiar to those... And that's why we study it. <laughs> uh, this also means that what is referred to as common sense is the understandings that are common to the society. All of these things are social creations. So as explanations that are often rooted in beliefs, values, and ideology, not science. Uh, the third is depersonalizing the personal. And this kind of harkens back to what I was saying earlier, where, yes, we all choose our behavior, and we think that those choices are very personal to us, but do we all have the same choices? And what choices do you have that someone else might not have? And how do we perceive those choices that we're given? So there are these dominant ideologies that underpin the society that stress individualism and free will. And the sociological approach stresses the impact of the social forces which produce this pattern behavior and thought processes in individuals. So we are the products of the society and the groups that we are members of within that society. So we're taking these things that we think are unique to us and going, okay, how does that fit into the broader picture? What is it about if it's not just you? Um, there's also three assumptions of the sociological perspective. Um, the first is that individuals are by nature social beings humans cannot exist outside of social networks. Um, we thrive with human interaction. Children enter the world totally dependent on others for survival. People have only been able to survive over a long period of time in social groups of one type or another. This is clearly evident in banned societies where the most severe punishment is banishment. So the worst thing you could do is send someone away. And our existence is dependent on the nature of the social group that we find ourselves in. And social isolation is a cause of a large portion of physical and mental illness. Social isolation leads to people more likely to engage in risk-taking behavior. Um, it leads to a lot of anxiety, depression, even um, psychotic symptoms at times. So we need people. Even the people that are antisocial need people to some extent. Um, the second assumption is that individuals are, for the most part, socially determined. So during infancy, adults, especially parents, can shape an infant into an infinite, in an infinite variety of ways, depending on beliefs, values, and culture of the society that they're in. So parents act as this cultural agent, transferring the way of their groups that they're members of and the society as whole onto their children. The individual's identity is socially bestowed. Who we are, how we feel about ourselves, and how others treat us 
are typically consequences of our location within that society. So if you are born into an upper class home, you are going to have a different identity and be treated by other people differently than if you were born into a family that was homeless and lived under a bridge in Florida. So those kind of things do matter. Um, an individual's conception of their self is also shaped by the way we're accepted, rejected, or defined by other people. So your parents matter a, a lot, and then the society at large matters because it decides how it's going to look at you based on who your parents are. So um, parents are the primary mode of cultural transmission. It's the most important social group we're ever going to be a part of. Uh, this is where you f get religion, values, your worldview. That's not to say that these can't, things can't change, but it is hard to do. We don't live in a caste system, but who your family is and where you come from changes what options you're given in life. And for any of those who would argue that, why are you here right now instead of at Harvard or MIT? You know, the, where you go to school and your ed educational attainment is based on where you live, what income you have, and how invested your family was in your education. I'm glad you guys are here, though. <laughs> um, the third assumption is that individuals create, sustain, and change their social forms within which they conduct their lives. So the entire social system, all the institutions, all the processes, all the culture, these are all social creations. These things were not just, they didn't just fall out of the sky. We, we created it. Society is a product of human action. However, not all individuals in the society have equal power in changing it. And I think any Anybody who's ever played the role of a student knows that you're not just going to walk in and change the educational system. That's not, you know, you don't have the power to do that. That's not to say you're not going to, you know, grow up one day and be in a position where you can't do that. But you have to get that level of power first. And those individuals and groups who are in positions of dominance in the society have more power to change it and mold it to their own advantage. These are the people who <clears throat> change the tax code so that their company does better or changes um, the regulations surrounding a certain industry to boost their own profits. Um, that's what this is. So what are the situations that would cause us to view the world sociologically? Um, usually if we are confronting other societies, whether you are a foreigner in another country or you welcome an exchange student or um, marry into a culture or have a family member marry into another culture, um, that would make you kind of look at things differently. Uh, being an outsider or a stranger within your own society, um, being marginalized socially for whatever reason, and then periods of societal crisis. So when everything goes absolutely nuts, that's when we tend to look at things a little bit more from an outsider's perspective. And some of the benefits of the sociological perspective, um, it challenges your for, it challenges your understandings of the world. All of these things that you take for granted, 
you get to look at it with new, fresh eyes and be really critical of what you have always assumed to be true. It allows us to understand the constraints and opportunities that affect our lives and enables us to be more active participants in our society. But every perspective has its downfalls. Uh, sociology is no different. Um, it's Sociology is not really a comfortable discipline. Um, we look at a lot of things that make people unhappy. <laughs> um, so it's not for everybody. We debunk common assumptions and misconceptions. And sometimes we look at things in an unflattering light because we need to. You can't be objective and ignore the stains that you see. So in that sense, I apologize in advance. I guarantee that we're going to go over a lot of material that you're probably not going to feel comfortable with just because of the topic that we're, that we're doing. Um, violence in particular is a really touchy subject and it is very personal for a lot of people and a lot of the material and a lot of the videos and stuff that we're going to watch are going to touch you and that's the idea. So I apologize in advance, but I do hope that uh, you can toughen it out till the end of the semester. So the perspective is also discomforting to many people because of understanding the constraints is liberating, but it's also personally disruptive. Yes, you can say, you know, I understand all of these things, and that's great that I understand all these things, but it sucks. And that's just how it is, unfortunately. Um, so it's also uncomfortable because the behavior of the subjects is not always certain. Um, issues of freedom and ever-changing nature of societal structures and processes and human adaptation to change. Um, not everyone is guaranteed to act in a predictable manner. So there's always that, you know, what if factor um, when we, we try to look at things. It's not um, a quote-unquote hard science like math. A plus B does not always equal C. Sometimes A plus B equals Z or F or, you know, whatever. But that's part of it that I enjoy. So I hope that some of you um, enjoy it as well. And I believe that is our last slide. So that is the end of the first section. And I will have this posted. If you have questions about any of the material, you're welcome to post questions on the discussion board, and I will respond as soon as possible. Um, your peers can also respond if they may have some insight that you don't. And I'll have another lecture posted uh, for next week. <laughs>